By the end of this video, you'll know how to edit sculpted bodies in Fusion 360. For this demo, I'm going to use one of the demo files that's located in your data panel. You'll want to click the data panel icon in the upper left hand corner. Then you'll want to make sure you're on the home page of your data panel. From here, you'll find the basic training section that's nested under the sample section of the data panel. Double click on the basic training section, then double click on the number three hyphen sculpting folder. Within this folder, we're going to use the reciprocating saw file. So I'll double click on the file to open it up. Once the file is open, you'll notice it has a lock icon next to the name, and that's because the sample files are read only. We'll have to make a copy of the file in order to work with it. To make a copy, I'll simply go to the file menu and I'll select the save as option and I'll save it to the product design online folder. You'll now see that we're working with the copy of this file. So the lock icon has disappeared and we can start to work with this file. The goal of this tutorial is to show you how sculpted bodies can be modified when parametric features reference them. To edit the sculpted body used to create this model, we'll need to first find the sculpted body in the timeline below. I'm going to use the horizontal scroll bar that's just above the timeline, which allows me to drag the timeline left and right until I see the purple sculpted body icon. Once I find the sculpted body icon, I'll right click on the icon itself and I'll select roll history marker here. This moves the history marker so we see the sculpted body as the last object, letting us focus on the sculpted body without the other timeline features in the way. You'll then have to either double click on the sculpted body icon, or you can right click and select edit, both methods which put us in the sculpt environment. If you had a message pop up about entering the sculpt environment, then you can close out of it and check the box if you no longer want to receive the message. I'll then use the view cube to look at the bottom of the model. One common thing you'll find yourself doing when working with sculpted bodies is using the insert edge command to create more edges throughout your body. I'll select the insert edge command from the modify dropdown list then you'll notice that there is a lot of space on the front third and fourth faces. So I'm going to select this top line. As I select the top line, you'll see this dialog box opens up, letting me know that there are improved T-spline capabilities. I'll go ahead and click that check mark, and then I'll click the OK button to accept these improvements. Next, I'll make sure to select the edge line above it and I'll also select the one below it. In the insert edge dialog box, I'm going to change the insertion mode to exact. Now the difference here is that the simple mode will simply create one edge, whereas the exact mode will divide these spaces up exactly the same way on each of the surrounding faces. I'll also change the insertion side to the both option which lets me create new edges on both sides of the selected lines. Last but not least, I'll type out 0.25 for the insert location value. You'll notice that the preview lines of these new edges appear in green, which is not to be confused with these other green lines that represent symmetry. It's also important to note that the insert location is not an absolute length or dimension. It's actually a decimal value between negative one and one, which indicates the portion of the distance from the source edge, which is the edge I selected, to the next adjacent edge. So for this specific example, by typing out 0.25, 
we're placing the new edge one fourth or one quarter of the distance from the selected edge to these next adjacent edges. I'll now click OK in the dialog box to confirm the two new edges. And again, you'll see that the exact mode created these additional edges, which wouldn't happen if we had the simple mode selected. Let's go ahead and insert one more edge to reinforce the concept. I'll right click and select Repeat Insert Edge. Then I'll select all three segments of this second edge line. I'll leave the insertion mode to exact and the insertion side to both. I'll type out 0.5 for the insert location, which places the line on each side. Now remember that typing out 0.5 means we're moving the edge 50% or half the distance from the selected edge to the next edge, not 0.5 millimeters or inches away. I'll go ahead and click the OK button in the dialog box. As you find yourself inserting edges into your sculpted bodies, you may find that you need to move an edge's location. Fortunately, we can do so by using the Slide Edge tool. I'll select the Slide Edge command from the Modify drop-down list. Then, I'll select all seven segments of this fourth edge, and I'll simply use the View Cube to look at the model from an angle to select the edges that are further down on the model. After all seven edge segments are selected, I'll type out 0.25 to move the edge 25% of the distance between the selected edge and the next line. Now that we've created more edges, which gives us more control over the contour of the model, we can use the Edit Form tool. Before using the Edit Form tool, we'll want to select all of the lines. I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and I'm going to select all seven edges of this line that I just moved over with the slide edge command. Once those are selected, I'll skip an edge and I'll select the next seven segments. Lastly, I'll skip another edge and I'll select the next seven edges, which will be the last seven edges that we select. Once these three edge lines, which all have seven segments, are selected, I'll right click and I'll select the Edit Form option. Then I'll hit the back view in the view cube to look at the side of the model. I'm going to use the single directional arrow to pull these edges down just a little bit, which creates a nice groove for the user's fingers to rest while they're using this tool. To be more precise, I'll type out negative 0.9 millimeters for the distance. The groove looks good, so I'll click the OK button in the Edit Form dialog box. Now that I've successfully altered the sculpted body, I'll hit the Finish Form button in the toolbar to convert the model back to a solid body. Then I'll head to the end of the timeline and I'll right click on the last icon. I'll select Roll History Marker here. And this may take a little bit of time to process and re-render all of the different features in the timeline. You'll also notice that there are some warnings in the timeline as some of the fillets have been affected by the new sculpted body. So just be aware of this, anytime you update a sculpted body in a parametric model, you may have to revisit some features in order to fix them. To wrap up this video, Hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of how sculpted bodies can be altered later on in the design process when they're utilized in conjunction with parametric modeling.
If you made it to the end of this video, then let me know by commenting below some suggestions of what you'd like to see me sculpt in Fusion 360. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please click that thumbs up icon and click on that playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch more sculpting tutorials. Lastly, if you're new to the channel, be sure to click that red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.